Hi there, welcome back to the Kenny Veach MK Mystery Missing Person Case. Today I wanted to present to you yet another new news article about the case and Kenny to review and analyse, to check for mistakes, to check for misinformation, to see if research was properly done, etc. And on top of that, we're going to be looking back and acknowledging the comments of one of my recent Kenny Reach videos I did. It was probably the last one to do with the Kenny's reaction, kind of strange, to the creepy looking cave. Further analysis on that at a later point, a different perspective. But for now, looking at the comments to answer any questions, acknowledge any key interesting information, etc, etc. It's all under control today two parts to this video. Make sure to stick around to understand it completely. Welcome to those that are currently here in the live premiere. I appreciate it. Shout out to the people last night. I mean, it was Badger Life, of course, Skeptical as well. Big shout out to her. Watch of Crazy, um, King Samoan, and probably another person as well. Shout out to them for their super chats last night in both my normal video and my live stream later on. Very good of those people to do that, okay? You know, for those that are currently here in this live premiere right now, be sure to share your thoughts, opinions, and reactions to what we're going to be talking about today. And if you are late or if you're catching up on the video, just be sure to leave some comments down below. And speaking of the comment section, pinned comment, there will be some additional links regarding my channel if you wish to check them out. And as well, top right corner of the screen, if you click on the eye symbol, you'll be redirected to some additional videos to catch up on from previous time. If you haven't watched them already, feel free to watch them, as well as the playlist to the Kenny Reach case. What I do want to say is... This is the 301st video on the Kenny Veach MK case. We've broken the 300 video mark, okay? So that's very good going. And obviously, once again, I am the only person on this platform. I am the only person in this entire planet out of billions of people on this earth. I am the only one to have made 300 plus videos on the Kenny Veach MK mystery case. Now, for those that come from that community, if you are interested in other mysteries or true crime related stuff, missing people cases, I have I've covered the Dylan Rounds case, okay, which is kind of mysterious in a sense as for where is Dylan and you know where is he exactly in the ground or further afar. I made over 425 videos on that case, so be sure to check that out when you do have time. So yeah, pretty full on, and because of being full on, because of being Mr. Consistent, Mr. Hard Worker, YouTube doesn't like that. YouTube punishes me for hard work. It makes no sense, but that's my reality, right? Um, we're going to be trying to put into perspective today the reality of research by others, and I'll share with you my thoughts from what I know and what I've heard within the case. And does it compare or does it contrast to what we're reading? You know, be sure to share your own thoughts and opinions if you pick up any contradictions yourself. What I also do want to say is, as of most recent time, once again, another big popular YouTube channel came around and did a video covering the Kenny Veach MK mystery case. Um... I think they're going to be doing a part two or something. Who knows? They kind of did research and did it from start to roundabout now, maybe. Um, they did credit me and some other people too. They mentioned about the CCTV footage, but what that big channel forgot to say, I think, was, and it was Warlight Raff who was the first and one of the only individuals to have analysed it on YouTube I don't think that was specifically mentioned. So in a sense, that channel out there, what they're called, the Way Files or something, whatever, they've done the research to an extent. Arguably, they could have done a bit more, technically. You see, what the reality is, you've got to take that into mind. There'll be quite a few humans that will come in interested because of the case and they'll think, oh, look at all this research. Look at this channel. Look at this video, how it's all been constructed together, all in one place. It's really good. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. 
Well, of course, it's going to be more piss easy when, first of all, you've got directors, you've got editors, you've got a whole bloody crew and team working on it. I am a one-man army when it comes to my channel and making videos. You know, one separated from all, so it is going to differ in terms of overall quality. But also take in mind that someone that comes in now to do research, they have it easier than the originals that did it from the start and was working with what they had with limited material and limited resources, creating the stepping stones to make it easier for people in the future. And at times, those in the future fail to acknowledge the hard work and the foundations built by the originals. And that doesn't just apply to this case, it can apply to life as well in the different generations over time, okay? If we wanna get deep, we will get deep, okay? But for now, let's get straight into this new article and see what it's all about. Here is the title of the article reads, Mystery of YouTuber who vanished without trace after finding a vibrating secret cave near top secret Area 51 base. And this was by Taran Kerr Peddler. Back pedaling to the streets because I think you need to do some more research. Updated 106 July 2023, considered somewhat new because there's not much documented on the case besides YouTube, right? Take that in consideration. But the title of this is already misleading, okay? So they're referring to Kenny as a YouTuber, but Kenny isn't exactly a YouTuber. He's a hiker, okay? And he did have a job originally, which he then quit, but some background information passed around by Susan Veach claiming that he was going to get another job elsewhere. Maybe we'll try and take a look at that some other time, but yeah. So the way this title has been worded as if Kenny went missing out there after finding the vibrating cave. But that's incorrect once again because, okay, he supposedly found it the first time round. The second time he went out on his recorded hike using his camera, wasn't able to find it. And then the third and final time, supposedly he didn't take his camera, but the girlfriend elsewhere got confused and mixed up saying that he did take an alternative one. Make of that as you will. Um, the other thing that's incorrect, that if a cave is around an area, it's nowhere near Area 51. Area 51 is many, many miles away from the hike route Kenny Beach took. Okay, so I wanted to correct that. You got the photo of Kenny there from his video. A YouTuber who vanished without a trace after finding a vibrating secret cave near the top secret Area 51 base still has not been found. Incorrect. Hiker and adventurer Kenny Veach mysteriously went missing after he stumbled upon the hidden cave nearly 10 years ago. Incorrect. He didn't go missing after finding the cave. Arguably, he never found it to begin with, as his footage proves. Credit, yeah, his channel Snakebit McGee, you have seen us countless times now. Kenny returned three times to the area, the third time being the last. There's Area 51, satellite imagery, or aerial imagery, you want to call it that. Area 51, Nevada, popular hotspot for alien hunters, maybe. So, it says the 47-year-old first discovered the cave near Area 51 in 2014. Incorrect, it's not near Area 51. After publicly documenting his findings on his YouTube channel. But he never did. He never publicly documented his findings on his YouTube channel because he didn't find anything when he went out there with his camera. So, incorrect once again. This is a terrible article. Kenny was then urged by his dedicated fans to retrace his steps and find the cave again so he could investigate further. After Kenny made the bizarre discovery, he took to the comment section of a video posted by an extraterrestrial interest group named Serious Disclosure. Posted to a video titled Son of an Area 51 Technician, Kenny wrote, One time during one of my hikes out by Nellis Air Force Base, I found a hidden cave. So why is this article saying that he found it near Area 51? Nellis Air Force Base is different to Area 51. How? Well, let's go in even further. Nellis Air Force Base isn't to do with the M-Cave, not really. 
It should be Nellis um, Air Force Test Range Bombing Range. So Kenny got that wrong himself as well. So that's great, isn't it? Not. Anything else there? So the quote by Kenny, the entrance to the cave was shaped like a perfect capital M. I always enter every cave I find, but as I began to enter this particular cave, my whole body began to vibrate. The closer I got to the cave entrance, the worse the vibrations became. Suddenly, I became very scared, hightailed out of there. But despite the explorer's reservations towards the suspicious cave, he returned for his followers and didn't find it, basically. What's that? According to Nevada Magazine, Kenny was armed with a 9mm handgun and a video camera that he was recording his expedition on. He also had hiking poles, backpack, etc. Do we have any more links? Um, okay. He began the 10 hour hike on very dangerous terrain as he hunted for the hidden cave located in a mountain right next to a bombing range. But Kenny hit a dead end and couldn't manage to locate the secret cave. That's kind of incorrect. He didn't literally hit a dead end because what the hike route he took was up Jeremy Canyon over Wild Horse Pass, then turning left and approaching, passing by Skull Canyon and then going through uh, Pitcher Canyon and then looping back. So he didn't reach a dead end there. But he, he did come up short in terms of trying to find the cave. Kenny says, I found a tarantula, toy toys and a ram, but I could not find the cave. Uh, we wrote in a social media post. We? What does we mean? That's weird. On November 10th, 2014, Kenny decided to venture back out after his followers were disappointed that he had failed the task at hand. Well, Kenny Beach was also motivated himself besides the pressure. But no one could have guessed that this would be the last of the explorer's adventures. After he didn't return from the short overnight trip, he told his family he was going on the search for the 47-year-old began. But that's incorrect once again. It wasn't shortly afterwards. It was eight days later when Kenny was reported missing. Why would you leave it that long? Bit suspicious, right? On November 22nd, search and rescue volunteers found Kenny's mobile phone near an abandoned mine shaft, but then the t tail grew cold. His scent stopped at the mine shaft, basically. Why is that? Either because the scent wore off, or Kenny didn't go any further. He double backed on himself, maybe to get picked up, maybe to get taken elsewhere to lay low, right? Fake the disappearance out in the desert. The article reads. To this day, the explorer has never been found, leading to much speculation on what happened to him. Well, once again, there is evidence to suggest he is alive, but clearly this person hasn't done the research. The mysterious circumstances of his disappearance fueled the internet with conspiracy theories and internet users are still taking their guesses. Cut that crap right now. We're not just guessing blindly in the dark. We're actually using hard material footage and some evidence along the way. And it isn't just full-on conspiracy theories. Some are well thought out, done appropriately and in a formal manner. Okay, get a grip of yourself. Some include Kenny unveiling government secrets, alien forces, seeing a drug deal, being attacked by an animal, and even faking his death. Hmm? You gonna mention, though, the research behind it? Probably not, because this article can't be valid. But Kenny's alleged girlfriend, Sharon Pilgrim, I mean, when you say alleged girlfriend, supposed girlfriend, doesn't sound very good, right? Doesn't sound quite stable, doesn't sound consistent, really. It says revealed at the time, but she believed Kenny died by suicide after battling depression for many years. Pilgrim said he quit his job a little more than a year before he disappeared. One helicopter flyover was done and there was no trace of Kenny or any of his camping things. So basically, they gave up real quick. The family didn't bother going out there. Sharon Pilgrim, I don't think, went out there either. So it was kind of given up on pretty quickly. The end. <laughs> anyway, it says... They found his car in the area. I told them it would be. They did find his cell phone by the mineshaft in the video. The mineshaft was only about a four hour hike from his car. It's my feeling he left it behind so that he could not be tracked from the GPS in it. He also did not take his video camera with him on his solo hike. It was left in his home. So he had no intentions of filming anything. So why, Sharon Pilgrim, did you say in a different post that he did take a camera with him? 
you know, a bit of a contradiction there. Anyway, the bit where you say, oh, I think Kenny left his phone by the mineshaft so they couldn't track his GPS. What a load of bollocks that is. Why the hell would you even take your phone with you in the first place? Okay, maybe you can't be tracked exactly where your final resting spot is. But people would have been able to track the fact that you're out there in that area of the desert, right? Why leave some clues behind if you don't want to be found? If you don't want to be found, don't leave any clues behind. You know what I'm saying? Seems a little bit silly, that, right? Anyway, cameras were reportedly lowered into the mineshaft near where Kenny's phone was discovered by search and rescue, but no sign of the hiker was found. His body still never been recovered, and so the mystery remains unsolved, even though research has been done since, and you can't be bothered doing it yourself from this stupid article. Anyway, Area 51 is an infamous spot for alien hunters, as the airbase is commonly believed to be the home of the development and testing of experimental aircraft and weapon systems. The base has never been declared a secret base, but all research and occurrences in Area 51 are top secret, sensitive, compartmented information. Conspiracy theorists believe the facility is used to store, examine, and reverse engineer crashed alien spacecraft. The current use of Area 51 is unknown and remains top secret. This comes after a mysterious shape was spotted and satellite images from Area 51, which sparked speculation that it could be a top-secret US aircraft. What's this? Mysterious shape was spotted on satellite images from Area 51. I don't remember that. Does anyone else? And in 2019, a US general stated that Area 51 had secrets that deserved to be protected after millions vowed to storm the highly classified base. I remember that, 2019, Storm Area 51. Even really Robin involved himself in that too, going out there and recording it. Area 51 sign, Groom Lake Research Facility, S4, warning, restricted area, use of deadly force authorised. Mm. Is that it? Okay, so that's it for the article. Once again, a very disappointing article. Misinformation, not fully explained, and lack of research. Well done. Now, that aside, let's return back to the comments and acknowledge them. Here we are. We've got around about 80 comments to get through. Try and go through it efficiently, see what people have had to say in response. More so response to Kenny reacting almost in a scared way regarding the M Cave hotspot area which he hiked through at the time. We've got Cleo there. We've got Glenn once again. Shout out to Glenn. We've got memes for fun saying, yes, but what I think is Area 51 forced him to leave the internet and try to be off the radar for everyone else and closed up the M cave. Right, so I think that might have been in response to the chat at the time of the live premiere. Area 51 forced him. I mean, yeah, maybe military intervention could have silenced him, but not physically. Like, would it have paid him off? I don't know about that. Would the military ever pay people off to be silenced, or is it more with direct force? Let me know your thoughts down below. As for the cave supposedly been sealed up, if that really was the case, well, you know, the, the span, the space of time, it would have been done very quickly because if Kenny found it in October 2014 and he went out in November, not, not November, he went, um, no, 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 it wasn't October. Actually, that's the thing, yeah. So the first time he came across it, it wasn't recorded. Then the second time he went out there, it was recorded on his channel, The Hike, and that was October time. And then it was November when he went out unrecorded supposedly and went missing there blah 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 but if we include the very first hike which was unrecorded was that cave area filled in or not i wonder and the space in time between that and then when he went out the second time in october would have been enough time for military to fill it in i wonder anyway cleo very weird kenny's energy true jay saying i always thought that there was a strange when passing the cave area, um, and still when gets like surprised, the M cave wasn't there anymore. Like it was gone when it was in front of the cover up cave. Yeah. So what Jay is referring to here is basically in Kenny's hike footage where Kenny turns and says, yeah, and a, a place just like here, a small chance that 
what Kenny was meaning was, this is the spot, but I can't quite fully recall on it because it looks different now, so it must be a different place. But it was one step. Possibility, right? Um, some people think that. Sinaloa. So Sinaloa, if you're there or not, there is another video coming later, just as a heads up to anyone that might be interested. Some review-based video. It'll probably come one or two in the morning, UK time, we'll see. It'll show on my main page anyway. Christy here saying, my impression seeing Kenny Reach's video you showed was that he spotted something in that other cave and looked back to see if it was still there. Maybe I'm wrong, but he seems to also walk faster after having zoomed into the cave. An interesting observation there about Kenny's walking pace, how it increases, supposedly. I mean, yeah, he could have looked back. He may have seen something. There's also a chance that maybe nothing was there, but on his mind at the time, he thought something was there and it spooked him. But if that really was the case, okay, if, if there was a valid point to be made that Kenny might have been spooked or scared about that cave or the area in general, well, isn't it completely pointless, the whole purpose of him going back out there armed? You get what I'm saying? If Kenny was initially scared of the supposed M cave originally and said, oh, I'll go back, but I'll, I'll be ready this time. Well, if he was scared over nothing, then is he was he really ready? Makes you think. We got Diana saying, Kenny said, dude, I'm not going up there. Okay. That's um, the response about the audio. I remember that. Right. So we've got this person, Conjunto Buena Mezcla, saying, I just watched this video 30 minutes after your super chat. I'm going to express an opinion not everyone will agree with, and some may laugh, to be honest. Okay. I'd estimate that the cave to be at least 15 to 17 foot vertical and an easy hike of maybe 100 foot from the desert floor. It's probably about 12 to 18 foot deep, but it gets lower to about 10 feet. I, ha I have explored one very well-known Lovelock cave system in central Nevada in 2018. It has a nice platform built by the state of Nevada BLM and has a historic past of Nephilim giants being burnt out of the cave by the local Pai, Paiute, Paiute tribe of northern Nevada. Oh, I see. It was where three giants were ravaging and maiming and eating members of multiple tribes hunting in the area. At that time, Lahontan Reservoir were large and vast freshwater lakes. This was around 3000, 4000 BC. Okay. My opinion is that it may have been used by those same giants with red hair, six fingers and toes and were n n native American bloodline. Also, I know the Great Basin American Desert that runs from southern Idaho to northern Arizona throughout Nevada, part of West Utah, have known Yucca men or desert Sasquatch. That hunt as they migrate from the mountains to the desert floor back to hunt pronghorn deer, mountain sheep and other game. Anyway, my channel features some of these past hikes and research videos. Not plugging my channel but stating my opinion on that cave and why Kenny was so reluctant to explore it alone. Good job. Well like Raph, so appreciate that. And it's good comment. Christy saying interesting. So just give me a second. Okay. Just click that. So if anyone is interested in the person's channel, okay, you've got the tag handle there at Conjunto Buena Mezcla Central California Bipedal Trail or Tracks. Unfortunately, the whole name isn't displayed on there, but I'm sure you'll be able to find it. So um, kind of interesting. The bit about the giants and those out there. I mean, interesting thing, I have actually heard about it um, maybe some months ago now, wasn't to do with the US, it was more to do with Afghanistan and the military. In the past, when you had the invasions, the US military going into Afghanistan and elsewhere into the desert and cave systems and supposedly coming across giants there that still exist. Could that apply to Nevada too? You never know. All kinds of different possibilities. I mean, if at any point bones are found of a certain size, it could reinforce it. So, good uh, comment there. 
Then we've got Alexia saying, in this image, I don't see the M-shaped cave, but at the entrance, yes, the outside, look at those two peaks in front of the entrance. There also seems to be a gravel path to enter. I see the M there. Outside, yes, I heard looks like, yes, they said dough. I think it's written like that. Where can I send you photos? So, yes, we received the explanation. Yeah. So that's all under control there. When I said about doing a future video, catching up on the different aspects, Alexia's comment will be acknowledged and we'll be taking a look at that, okay, from a different perspective. So be on the lookout for that video. We got this person with a cat profile picture. That's good to see. Etta with a cat profile. Um, looks like a good cat. That cat is staring directly right at me. Hmm. They say you can visibly see the M in the rock formation around the opening. So it does look like more than one person has noticed it, which is a positive. You know, the more people that see it independently. Okay. I know it just forms a bit of consistency. Conjunto says, by the way, the smaller cave to the upper ridge from the large cave looks to be a mountain lion sized den. Ah, the upper ridge. Are you talking about on the right-hand side? If so, I, th I think I know what you mean. Yeah. I guess the interesting thing is, out of all the hikers that have gone out there, not a single hiker has actually recorded a mountain lion. Interesting. Christy, interesting video. You're welcome. Namis says, to me, it looked like he was unsure if it was the M cave. It definitely reminded him of it. He said, looks like. I think he meant it looks similar to the cave he was looking for. That's what made him take a double take. I think the most interesting thing is, if he is saying it looks like the cave, he also said behind him, oh, a place just like here. He's doubling up on himself, doubling down, saying this could be the area. I think, you know what? At some point, it could be small videos, but possibly just like these compilations, right? Audio, the footage, back to back, how Kenny says, place like here and looks like. It's in the same spot, but the adjacent opposite to one another in parallel. I don't know, it's very coincidental in a way. We'll definitely have to look a bit closer at that. This person saying, maybe it is just me, but I see the M. The cave is on the left side of the M. I don't know if that's in line with what the other people are saying, but we'll definitely look closer to that some other time. Jeff Clark saying, several things. Number one, the shape of it matches how Kenny describes his M cave. Tall and narrow. Two, when you are out there, everything is a matter of energy, reserves, and time. Just because these guys can see and film features does not mean it is a simple thing to go go up to them and check them out. You, you always have to keep in mind that you still have to make it back to your vehicle, so fully exhausting your legs is not a good idea. Same for time involved to get up to such things, even without the time distortions that have been documented in that area. So I guess I'll just take a screenshot of that comment just to refer back to in the future. Okay. Jeff says, the whole thing east to west is Pitcher Canyon from the cut in the east to the entrance to the west. The eastern half is fairly flat gravel and wide and the western half turns into a narrow winding slot canyon. Jeff Clark says, Sean Horlacher goes up to that cave and films it very closely. If you stand at Sean's covered cave and look directly south across Pitcher Canyon, you will be looking at that cave directly between the two with a little skull sitting on the boulder. James saying, pretty sure Aqua Chigger and SB Vegas Adventures were up there as well. There is one, I'm not 100% on the location, I think it's a mine that Sean and his buddy went into during an overnight hike. I think it's a, above the covered cave towards the agave pit. They went in as far as the collapse you could see over it, but it would take some digging to get past it. No one else has been in it that I remember, and I always wondered what was past the collapse. I don't remember any of that, personally. Jeff Carr says, I don't remember if those two walked over there, but I'm sure Sean did. In fact, he climbs up that cliff face to several higher ones as well. It was during one of his camping trips out there. I don't remember the other one you were mentioning. I don't remember anyone going into a cave and finding a collapse. Most of these caves are too shallow to enter. Mm. 
Interesting. June saying, just watched an older video of yours where Kenny walks right by the cave that was covered up. Strange because it was covered after you went missing, correct? But no, the cave today didn't look like an M. And in my opinion, the reason why he said he's not going up there is he was looking for the M cave and he wasn't about to stop and go look around anywhere else. Sam, this is the thing. This supposed covered up M cave wasn't covered up after Kenny's disappearance. It was covered up whilst Kenny went out there as he documented it when he said, oh, a cave, a spot just like here. And it was already filled in by them, Sam. That's if it was truly filled in or if it's natural because that's a, a discussion ongoing. The next comment by Sascha saying, nice video. I think you covered that already in the past videos. Strange voices in the background, but you're right on the place at 1728, a voice says, you wait. And then at 1747, just follow the red tape. Before he entered the cave area, a voice says, keep going in his video. You can hear a lot of things in the background, weird voices and voices who are out of place. All kinds of weird stuff going on, I agree. Um, the bit where it says, keep on going, keep going. I don't remember hearing that in the audio. If anyone has the timestamp for it, with regards to Kenny's hike footage out there, feel free to drop it down below. What's the other one? At 13.04, he knew actually where the cave is. He says, I haven't come to the area where the cave is. It's along here somewhere. At 17.14, um, he struggles voice not sure what the voice says let me know uh right we'll have to take a look at that or something at some point mm. preston to me it always sounded like he said doink i'm not going up there yeah true such a brief moment then not much reason to read into it too much but i do feel like he was going to say something after looks like interesting to ponder has anyone gone into the cave he zoomed in on well as said sean horlack has supposedly did we got the cat lady here saying, I think he meant dude instead of do it, but I don't know. Christy, possibility. Mm -hmm. Skeptical. I'm watching on replay and I'm getting sucked into this case. I just watched Kenny's M cave hike video for the first time. I was instantly creeped out by his reaction to the strange cave. The way he abruptly stopped speaking was suspicious. What's with all the strange voices? I hear everything. Everyone is describing, looks like, do it. Follow the red tape, keep going. I agree with others. The area surrounding the opening of the strange cave looks like an M. What happened to this guy? Well summarised once again. Skeptical does really well at taking it all in, you know, on the spot. I mean, when it comes to me, I've had time, you know, over a long period, but skeptical in a short space of time has done really well. Christy saying, what could the red tape be? I think sometimes red tape is used as a like kind of like code word for silencing or hiding the truth or something. Smooth Fishing says, I think the reason why he didn't worry too much about finding the M cave because there was never an M cave. I think it's just part of his fake disappearance. It was all planned in my opinion. Also, he couldn't even make his mind up if he was high up or on ground level because he said it was in both places. That's true, that. James saying, in the thousands of pocket caves and sheep range we've seen searched in how many videos, but how many hikers and not one spelunking cave uh, said. Hmm. In my opinion, he was either in the wrong range or he hardly explored this particular range more than just a walkthrough or overnight just to say he's been out there, maybe. Deborah looks like two eyes peering out at me. Mm, yeah, it could be what he was thinking. JC. Oh, Jace. Saying, I get the feeling he was nervous about that cave and the entire area. Bit of a sticky wicket. Not heard that line before. Interesting. This person. I don't know, man. New to all this. I didn't get anything from this video besides F that I'm not going to waste my energy going up there. Where exactly was the phone found besides being found? I never see anything about the exact location, is it now? I mean, the area is pretty desolate and not many people go there over time. I mean, you say you don't get much from the video. You don't want to be wasting energy. Well, simple as you just check the playlist out. You do your research on the case if you wish to. And if not, well, you know, can't be complaining if you don't know everything. Okay. 
Christy, when people talk about covered up cave, how does this happen? Is it somebody covering up caves on purpose to prevent others from finding them? How often does this happen? For what other reasons does it happen other than normal rock slides? Well, you know, some people might fill in a cave or fill in a mine shaft if it's no longer in use or if it appears unstable. Government getting involved, maybe military mining groups, associations, you know, they fill it in to prevent general public from going in and getting hurt, harmed, and then having to be rescued. That's one one explanation there. Other times, if it's something secret out there and the military know about it or, you know, created it in the first place, and then they catch wind that there are general public out there trying to infiltrate, it could compromise them. Could compromise the military or a base or some secret, so they're going to fill it in. The only other reason, which has been mentioned at times, was out in the open, desolate places. It could be some kind of toxic waste ground or underground base area where toxic waste and all kinds of stuff is dumped in and then filled up, covered up, so then no one goes into it, but it's a way of disposing of stuff. Is it legal? I don't know. Dragon saying, I definitely heard Kenny say, looks like, and do it. Okay. I strongly agree about looks like in terms of what he saw inside. It looks like some kind of animal, maybe. In my opinion, do it is in fact dude, dude. I won't go there, maybe. Mm hmm. Okay. Arunka looks like something is in there, but he stopped because that would lead him into full on panic, maybe. This person, if you look at the ridges or mountain that the cave is in, it does also look like the letter M, so this might well be the M cave everyone is looking for. Has any of the other guys, like, yeah, some people have gone up there. Sean Holacker, maybe SB. Hmm. Ben, this is all assuming he was alone. Ben, I think he's chilling in town next to me on the east coast. <laughs> okay. Steve, you are making a good point about Kenny mumbling moment. Okay, I appreciate that. Steve, as an American, he expresses a term used rarely, but definitely to mean not this time. Nope. And that sound is doink. It is seen in old comic books. When I was a kid, acting silly with pals, uh, we would say doink to mean nope, goofy, uh, no. I think doink might have been mentioned in Scooby-Doo, possibly, as well. Correct, looks like. Skeptical, at the end of the day, Warlike Raff should be appreciated and commended for his efforts in each of the cases he is covering for his research, analysis, and presentations. I am thankful for all of that, plus the time taken to respond to comments. It's all there for review. Shout out to you, Skeptical. It's a good comment, that nice. Here's person, default one, saying, You are so boring, man. I don't know how many people watch these videos and waste minutes of their day to watch a video that goes nowhere. Some people just don't want to go to work. Jeff Clark says, where would you like such a video to go? We only have limited information, so we are simply trying to uh, something out every clue possible. Do you prefer he makes something up, even if it's false? My response, well, 4 million plus views on my channel, approaching 5 mil. People seem to be interested and have a longer attention span than the likes of a default profile like yourself, maybe a TikTok mentality. Responding back to Jeff Clark, okay, and then what after? You know that there is bigger problems in the world than making dumbass videos, Crystal Skull, or I don't know what the F. Bro, they try and distract you, man, and it's working. Bro, you know how many kids dying in war, Mexico and other states, and not all speak of that, but then dumbasses like this YouTuber. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, user. Yeah, we're supposed to bend over backwards and bow down to everything else out there, even if it doesn't quite concern us. Oh yeah, we're supposed to drop down all tools, drop down all forms of entertainment or fun or anything, anything, if it just doesn't fit a certain agenda or mentality. Yeah, yeah, nope. What else is mentioned here? Responding back to me, and there you go, buddy, the fact that you waste 4 million people's time when they got bigger problems in their home, they got a fix, but they don't because dumb asses like you distract them. You in it for views or to make the world a better place, you come back to be better, buddy, you waste people's time. Or you either 4 mil people that have nothing better to do in their life. So either you've got poor 
you know, you speak a second language, maybe English isn't your first, or you are of a young age, a complete degenerate that lacks any ability in reasoning and thoughts. What you said there was a complete embarrassment, okay? Pathetic language, pathetic vocabulary. You have no clue what you're talking about, and it checks out with that default piss-poor profile. Piss-poor with a letter P in the profile pic. Very fitting. You know, you say about 4 million people have had their time wasted. Well, those 4 million people choose to watch my videos naturally. It's their choice. Just like how some good people out there choose to support this channel. I don't see you doing that. Just basically, well, why are you? Hmm? Not much from the looks of it. Whingy whiner once again. And you talk about wasting time, and yet at the same time, there's been moments where I have saved people's lives. There's been moments where some have reached out and said, because of your videos, your coverage, and your lighthearted videos, it stopped them from committing suicide. Have you been able to prevent people from committing suicide? Probably not. Yet I have. And it's all been done in a natural way. It's as simple as that. Okay? What else do we have here? Harley, you realise you're wasting more time by going off about something that won't change. What do you think this will achieve? Do you think telling him he's boring to you is going to change him, his channel, or the way he operates? If you're bored, scroll away. Why we're even given the power of free will and a autonomy if we're just neglecting it. Use these opposable thumbs we were gifted with. Exert an ounce of energy, about 5% of the energy just spent arguing here and just swipe away. Now, to be honest, you can't swipe away on standard videos. You have to click away. If you're watching a TikTok video or a YouTube short, you can scroll up or down. Okay. I just go to this channel, but from what you see, he's doing his best. So unless you can pop out 4 million views and however many videos and squares he has here, the opinion on his personal channel is none of your business. If you can't do better, you have no place to even try to speak. So uh, I've got about, what was it, 2,000 videos on my channel and on the way to 10,000 subscribers. Stone Cold saying, still haven't changed. Your pathetic, boring clickbait that like to belittle others in your comments for giving fact, your views mean nothing, the way you present yourself, clearly pathetic and weak. I mean, who are you? Is this all the same person? No, it's different people. So, I don't know who this individual is. Oh, get off. Stoner. Oh, Stoner. Well, clearly you not in the quite you're not you're not just not you're just not in the frame of mind are you to be talking present yourself clearly pathetic and weak what's pathetic is the fact that you've contributed absolutely nothing to a missing person case there are missing people out there and one is spreading awareness of them and what are you doing not much and for the other person higher up to say that oh there's more important things going on in this world so you're basically saying that missing people, that means nothing. It's not that important. Well, that clearly sh says a lot more about you than it does about me. Silly, silly people. Stoner, rest assured, she got all his viewers from clickbait. They all fell asleep with YouTube on and woke up with regret seeing his channel pop up on random, not on purpose, not with the way he presents himself and treats commenters. Who is she? She got all his viewers. I don't know who she is. What's your point? The person in the video is a bully and got his viewers from clickbait and others fell asleep and woke up to his show randomly playing if any views the guy's a jerk. So this person called Stoner says that Warlike Raph is a bully. Oh, okay. I guess that's um, a new title to add to the endless list of names. Okay. User agrees. And Jeff Clark responds, you are free to tackle world affairs on your own channel. This channel is about unsolved mysteries and true crime. And as well, gaming, reviews, 
ambient sounds, ASMR, music, DJ, the lot. Full-on hybrid. So these dead-end default channels are a waste of oxygen, basically. We got Marina saying 11th to 17th, 23. The Y files just put out volume one of oh, Kenny Veach. Yep. Mm hmm. It was really good. Okay. There you go, there, the link. Skeptical says, as you know, I just started looking at this case. Your videos have been very helpful. Recently, I've been focusing on the CCTV footage. I've watched yours and other videos, but I still have a question who released the video? If she, the owner, Veach, sorry, I forgot the first name, is covering for Kenny and it is him in the video, she shouldn't release it for others to see and identify him. CCTV, okay, yeah, yeah. Jeff Clark, exactly. And by the way, it's not him. So, why would someone release the footage if they were covering for someone? Unless the person that released the footage at the time wasn't fully sure or certain it was Kenny and then later realised, oh shit, made a mistake and then decided not to push it any further with the police. Not able to retract the video because that would be seen as suspicious, but enough to say, you know what police, we don't need to go any further with this. That's one way. Brian, I thought you said he was alive. Well, there is evidence to suggest he's alive. Okay, if there is more evidence in the future, that's welcome. But besides the disappearance of Kenny, alive or not, okay, you got the mystery of the M cave, a standalone thing. And that's it for the comments there. So there we go, we've catched up. So yeah, I think that pretty much summarises it all. We've, ca we've caught up, we've got through those final few new articles. There are still some older articles and forums and pages to get through. But that can be done with time. I do prefer spreading those out because too many back-to-back -back can be a bit full-on and a bit boring. I do understand and agree that, yeah, at times the heavy text-based videos can be, I don't know, arguably on the dull side. But if it's of a certain length, not as bad. Maybe try and break it up, possibly. Um, just one more thing is like a little update, heads up. The video that I was trying to upload yesterday, Kenny Veach related, was limited, restricted by YouTube. Once again, um, I, I was told that the video does not follow guidelines, but clearly it did follow guidelines. Stupid mistake by YouTube many, many times already now, typical. It was resolved and it's okay now. I did upload it earlier. But because what... Well, what I did yesterday, I uploaded it about four times in a row, right? Because I was trying to make edits and slight changes to each video in hopes of breaking and fixing the glitch, okay? It didn't work, but it's okay now. It's not the point, though. It shouldn't happen in the first place. It's not fun to go through, right? But because I've got four videos of the same thing sitting about, one's already been uploaded, I might as well just re-upload the rest just to push out that awareness, because not everyone will watch the short video. It hit, It is hit and miss, so just re-upload it here and there. I mean, at the end of the day, if YouTube are going to poorly treat me badly, if YouTube are going to screw me over, you know, I need to defend myself, okay? And I need to react correctly and appropriately to the resistance overall by anyone or anything out there. So those three remaining videos I will upload over time just to spread that awareness. You know, they're there. They might as well be made, you know, usage of. Um, I didn't plan on uploading all four of the same, but, you know, because I tried and tried to overcome that glitch, that that limitation. Right, fuck it. Just upload it. I don't care. Just upload it. Spread the awareness. Spread the awareness. Keep it alive, right? I think... The whingers and whiners out there, really, you could say that 99% of whingers and whiners in any true crime or mystery community clearly don't want that person to be found. And that says a lot about them as a human overall. Mm, pathetic. Pathetic excuse of the human race. But that aside, hopefully you enjoyed the video overall. If you do want a more light-hearted video, something a bit more casual, don't worry, there will be a video later or in the early hours of the next day. So be on the lookout for that. I'll see you next time. For now, goodbye and good night.